Welcome back for another video. This is the third and final entry of my first concert experiences in the span of almost a year. How's it going, old schoolers? You are kicking it old school, and I'm your host, Russell J.S., formerly Dr. Old School. The third and final destination we are at. We're here what used to be the Kmart parking, the Kmart shopping plaza. That's no longer Kmart. That is a uh, home and decor, no, decor and floor. But it was right here in this place where you see the Sunfresh Market. It used to be Ricochet Nightclub, which was a local country western themed nightclub here in Fort Myers, Florida. A very popular one at the time where they've held some good concerts, you know, both country music and even rock. But this bad Oscar right here was, I got the first two tickets, one and two sold for this particular show. I was, I still am enthusiastic about classic rock even to this day. You see what it was, was <clears throat> being a fan of heavy metal, heavy hard rock, heavy metal, and punk rock music. My mother, being very religious, was very skeptical on the music I was listening to. I mean, I could have been buying a Kenny G CD or a Celine Dion CD, and it would still be satanic to her. And that's her, that's her cup of tea when it comes to music. But, um, but yeah, it was this concert in particular that I had been dying to see. Because the thing is, I became an aficionado of classic rock, you know, like The Doors and Jimi Hendrix and... Santana, Grateful Dead, The Who, Led Zeppelin, Rolling Stones, and Beatles. Because I came to a realization that a lot of my heavy metal punk and punk rock and hard rock heroes all descended from those groups in particular. One group I'm about to talk about in particular, though, is a band. They were, I mean, after Black Sabbath hit it big as one of the premier heavy metal bands, or they called the pioneers of heavy metal music. You had a lot of other bands coming out of the woodwork here in the States. You know, you had, you had Rush, you had Aerosmith, you had Kiss, you know, and everywhere else in the world, you know, ACDC was coming around, uh, Thin Lizzy from Ireland. They were considered, they were all considered heavy metal, and they still are. But this one particular band that came out of Long Island, New York, where they all met in college, their lead guitarist is one of my favorite guitar players of all time. And I have, after this concert, I had long since seen this group three other times. As a matter of fact, I saw them in concert five years after this one back in 2003 at another club that's just right up the road from here. I'm talking about... Yes, on your feet or on your knees. From New York City, Blue Oyster Cult. Yes, I was excited. I saw Blue Oyster Cult here for $20. And here's the story. This is one of the most exciting concert stories ever that I have. I found out that they were coming to town, and they were in particular coming to play at Ricochet here in Fort Myers. I was excited about it. The day I heard about it, I went down to the record store where they were selling the tickets, and I ended up, me and my bud, me and my former best friend, we ended up going, I'm not going to get into that kind of, that thing about him, we ended up going, we had one, number one, and number two, he wanted number one, and I was like, uh-uh, I bought the tickets, so therefore, I get number one, and there was a big fight, and finally I gave in, and I said, here, if it's going to make you quit complaining, here, take number one, which I was upset about. But not only did we have the first two tickets sold, we arrived two hours early. We were at sound check. We were, they were just doing sound check at the time. And the DJ, which I have long since become friends with since, who was DJ Animal at the time from 96K Rock here in Fort Myers, he was giving us he was giving away the free t-shirts, the bumper stickers, bottled water. And he let us in the, he let us inside in the sound check and not only was it awesome to see BOC do their sound check, but the sun was just blaring down on all three of us like you wouldn't believe. 
and there we were that entryway at the sun fresh market we were standing right there with the dj and he was letting us know he was giving us a head up heads up if we were to rush the stage and he was going to drop kick us and kick us out of the place and have us trespassed we understood that but we weren't really listening because we were just getting hit by that nice ice cold air conditioning they had in there it was just quite a relief quite a rush and there was BOC doing their sound check. It was just a fun time. And then we went back outside. Moments later, we see them coming out, not knowing it's them, until we saw bass player Danny Miranda, who you know came back a few years ago to the band. We seen Danny Miranda come out, and he introduced himself. And then we saw a few old, other older gentlemen. We were thinking they were record execs and whatnot. Turned out it was Buck Dharma. Alan Lanier, Eric Bloom, the three original members of the band at the time that were still remained in BOC, and former Rainbow Slash Black Sabbath drummer Bobby Rondinelli, which I thought at the time that was the best drummer that the band had. I mean, his, his drum solo during Godzilla was just awesome. And we were front row, and we called out to Buck Dharma and the gang and told them how great they were. They rocked. You kicked butt. Blah, blah, blah. Well, we said, uh, we said, we didn't say butt. We said that other word, but you know, and they gave us thumbs up, smiled, waved. As a matter of fact, right where that white Mercedes Benz is parked, that's where my car was parked at the time. And their car was parked right in front of it. Had I known that, I would have asked them to autograph my hood, you know, autograph the hood of my car. But things didn't work out that way. At least we got to meet them. I have long since seen Blue Oyster Cult three other times. As a matter of fact, the last time, the last time I went to see them, me and my friend Rick each bought cowbells. And you, if you remember, if anybody remembers from 2000, that Saturday Night Live sketch with Will Ferrell and Christopher Walken, the more cowbell bit, in honor of that bit, we decided to bring cowbells, and we played cowbells during Don't Fear the Reaper. And we got in the middle of the guitar solo, a lady that worked for the band yelled at us, claiming, oh, it was in the paper, no cowbells. But who reads the newspaper this day and age? Who reads it? Nobody, except for some, you know, some 80-year-old or 90-year-old couple who don't work with computers. But... You know, it was one of those things. We had a good time. I still have my cowbell. I still have it. And, you know, it's forever in my memory. I hope Blue Oyster Cult comes back to Southwest Florida again. I would like to see them a fifth time. I mean, they are getting up there in age, but they are like a fine wine that's aged to perfection. And if you ever get a chance for Blue Oyster Cult to come in your town, I suggest you go see them. I mean... To me, there are a lot, I mean, in my opinion, there's a lot of bands I love. You know, I love a lot of older bands and newer bands, but in my opinion, in my, in my personal opinion, I'd say they're a lot better than a lot of bands that get more recognition than they do. You know, they hardly get any kind of recognition, and their musician, the quality of their musicianship is just superb. They never disappoint. And, you know, if you ever get a chance, if they come into your town, I suggest you go see them. It is worth the price of admission. They do not disappoint. I mean, cities on flame with rock and roll, astronomy. I mean, if anything, any, any bands, if you like any of the old school thrash bands or heavy metal bands from that came out around the 1980s and the early 90s, you know, like, you know, Motley Crue. Metallica, Anthrax, they'll tell you point blank that Blue Oyster Cult is one of their main influences. As a matter of fact, if you have a copy of Metallica's uh, double disc album, cover album, Garage Inc., the song, listen to that song, Astronomy, that they do. That's, a, that's actually an old Blue Oyster Cult tune from 74. And I suggest after you listen to that, listen to go ahead and find the original song by Blue Oyster Cult. Anyway, if you are new to the channel, I've been forgetting to say this, and I forgot, you know, I actually forgot, I was so excited to do this. If, uh, 
if you know anybody under the age 13 must watch this video with a parent and if your parents allow you to view this content then your parents are totally awesome and if you're new to the channel let, hit a like hit the like button subscribe and leave a comment anyway this is your old pal Russell JS formerly Dr. Old School wanting to wish you I hope you enjoyed this trilogy of videos I just put together for you today and yeah I just took my hat off it was getting kind of hot I want to wish you as always Godspeed and may the force be with you, always.